Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Brian Mitchell, and today I will talk about the Apple Watch Series 5. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO75. Now, just to start off with, um, I'll just let you all know that I bought the Space Gray Apple Watch Aluminum or Series 5 44mm with an Alaskan Blue Sport Loop band. Uh, Apple introduced a new thing this year with the Apple Watch where you can um, kind of customize any case with any band in like any, any way. Um, I think last year with the Series 4, they started packaging them separately. So you would buy a, a watch and they would have like a hand-built box that inside had two boxes, one with a watch and one with the band. And this year, they did the same thing for the Series, series 5, but you can now customize it on the Apple Store app or online and really customize it to your needs ahead of time versus just um, from Apple's pre-built ones that are packaged the same way. So uh, to begin with, um, let's just go over a few of the new features. So it's the same size as the Series 4 from last year. It still has um, like the, the ECG, um, the, the rounded corners, uh, etc., or more rounded corners of the screen. Um, but new this year is an always on display. So, um, this is kind of like the last Holy grail feature of the Apple watch. Um, the other one being a couple of years ago when the series three added cellular. Um, so this always on display, Apple calls the LTPO display. Um, and I'll just read a little paragraph from their website cause it explains it a lot better than I could. So it goes like this. The low-temperature polysilicon and oxide display features a reinvented pixel architecture that lets the screen refresh rate dip from 60 Hz to a power-sipping 1 Hz when the watch is inactive. A new low-power driver, ultra-efficient power management, and a new ambient light sensor work together so the display can always stay on with up to 18 hours of battery life. So Apple clearly uh, packed some new hardware in here to support this. So there are also some software changes that uh, accompany this new hardware. And so it uh, kind of, you know, when it lowers down to one hertz, so that's one screen update repaint per second, um, it, you clearly can't, like, animate a second hand. So it, it removes the second hand. Um, some complications kind of pull away to a, a less active mode um, that just aren't updated as frequently. For example, like the timer, um, instead of counting down second where so... Um, where it's like 10 minutes and then it goes to nine minutes, 59, 58, it, it just rounds to the, to the nearest minute. So it would just say nine min, for example, if you have an app open, it kind of blurs it. So it kind of takes what would be a screenshot, uh, blurs it away with like a very light gray. And then it puts a, the current time in a digital readout kind of overlaying that. Now that's all the time. It's always digital. So if you had an app open, you're kind of stuck with a digital display. If you otherwise would have an analog watch face on your watch home screen. So I personally um, like this always on display. It's, you know, the latest feature, so I'm going to give it a go. Um, and, and because of that, I'm, I'm mixing up the watch face on my watch, so I'm no longer using the modular screen, which I had on my Series 3 watch, but I'm using um, the new California one, and I'm using a mode where it's, it's analog and it only has one complication. And I use carrot weather so I can see my weather. Now... I, I still use the other faces, so I swipe left and right on my face viewer so I can see, um, for example, the, the timer widget or um, start a workout more easily or look at my activity. Um, and so I just, that's, you know, I use that a few times throughout the day, so I'll just swipe over to the other face for like a quick shortcuts. I think what really excels with the always on display is like a, a clean watch face that is more like a mechanical watch, so analog, um, a little more open space, and I think that works really well. So with that always on display, uh, in that excerpt I read earlier, um, it says up to 18 hours of battery life, and that's uh, true, but the the battery life isn't as good as my Series 3 that I was coming from before. Um, I believe they have a larger battery in the Series 4, sorry, Series 5, but um, with the display being always on, it doesn't quite make up for the difference. Um, I do find it's enough, but if I forget to charge it overnight, it usually will not make it through the next day, where my Series 3, especially when it was new, um, pretty reliably could, unless I was doing many long workouts. Another new feature, I guess the only other new hardware feature, 
of the Apple Watch Series 5 is that there's now a digital compass or a magnetometer. So this is something that's been on the iPhone since the 3G, I think, or 3GS. So when you're in maps, it'll, it knows which direction you're facing. And so it can in, use that to assist with navigation and other apps that want to use that. Minor feature, but I'll take it. They did uh, create a compass app to to complement that so you can see you know, which, which degree you're pointing your watch at, and they uh, pair it with the, the built-in GPS to figure out um, your elevation as well. So that's kind of cool. I've used that uh, once so far, I think. <laughs> so this Apple Watch, the Series 5, that is, um, also adds a new case type. So, um, you know, the watch has always been aluminum and stainless steel from the very beginning with the first-generation Apple Watch. Um, they added a ceramic I think for the series three, maybe don't quote me on that. And then it went away and now the ceramic is back with series five, but they also added a titanium. Um, and so they're, they're kind of spec as aluminum is the, the bottom end and then it goes stainless steel, titanium, ceramic. Um, and they call the titanium and ceramic, the Apple watch edition again, which we haven't seen for a couple of years since that very expensive solid gold one from the first generation. The aluminum starts at $399 for a 40 millimeter. Um, I think it's another $30 for the 44. You can add cellular for another $100 on the aluminum model. And then the stainless steel starts at $699, and it's $30 or $50 more for 44. Titanium starts at $799, so only $100 more than stainless steel. And ceramic starts at $1299, which is like a solid white. It's very pure and clean. I, I would like one if it weren't $1299. But what can you do? I will be happy with my aluminum. Um, the titanium comes in like a normal, which is kind of like it's a brushed look. So it's kind of like an aluminum, but it's it's more textured than aluminum would be. Um, and there's also a space black, which is a very dark black. It's it's a pretty cool look. I purchased the space gray aluminum with a uh, sport loop band. So um, I'm on the lower end side and I bought without cellular. Um, I bought a cellular Apple Watch Series 3, and I used cellular for the... They had th- a three-month promo where I think AT&T would credit your account with, um, I don't know, the price of three months of it. But at $15 a month, it was not worth it to me at all. I sent, like, one email, and I sent a text message once and a phone call once just to try it out. But I always have my phone on me, and it's usually charged up, so I found that I really didn't use it at all. All right, so my thoughts on the Series 5 coming from a Series 3. So the my first impression was this thing is giant. So I came from the 42mm uh, Series 3, which was the larger size, and now I have the 44mm Series 5, which is still the larger size. So any Apple Watch band that I have will still fit on the new Series 5. Um, it took a few days to get used to the, to the giantness of it, but... Um, my my wrist is large enough that a 44 millimeter watch looks all right, I think. I'm used to it. I've been wearing an Apple Watch for a number of years. Um, yeah, as I was saying before, the battery life is a little worse than the Series Three, but I think that's okay. Um, if I need to do a you know a very long day or something, I can always turn off the always on display, which I think will make a pretty significant difference. Um, so an example of this would probably be. Um, In the springtime, when I do the MS-150 and bike 75 miles two days in a row, um, my first-generation Apple Watch, also called the Series Zero informally, um, died around the 60-mile mark just by the amount of time that I was wearing it. Um, The first year I did the MS-150, I think that watch was two years old at that point. And so my Series 3, the two years I did the MS-150 with the Series 3 was fine. It, you know, had like 15, 20% at the end of it, but um, it made it through. So I think the Series 5 will definitely need to turn off the display to make sure it'll last long enough. The Series 4 last year got um, a couple of new watch faces. Uh, The infograph being the one that just like lets you put tons and tons of complications on the watch face. And then WatchOS 6 came out with the Apple Watch Series 5, and other older Apple Watches will support that as well. Um, And that added the new California watch face. So both the California and Infograph variants are only supported on the Series 4 and 5 with the more rounded corners on the display. And so that lets for some 
lets you use some new complication styles that weren't available on the Series 3. So that's kind of nice. Just uh, get a new refresh look. It fills the screen a little better as well because the um, Series 3 had you know square corners, and so um, complications couldn't quite go to the edge in the same way. Um, the Series 5 has uh, an ECG on it, so you can test your heart rate or your not heart rate, but the, um, the heartbeat pattern and see if you're having a normal heartbeat rhythm. I tried it once and it said it was good. So hopefully I am still healthy and all that. That pretty much covers the Apple Watch Series 5. Um, not a lot of hardware changes, so not a ton to talk about. I like it. It's a solid update. Um, I should also probably note that the processor i think is the same as in the series 4 so it's really kind of a minor update other than the always on display which you could argue is a, is a very large feature so it is a, an update to the apple watch i'll at least leave it at that 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 kind of concludes my review um short and sweet i like it apple watches are great um apple will still sell still sells the series 3 for i think 199 so if you're looking to get an apple watch that one's uh, a great purchase as well for something a little cheaper. You can find me on my website, brianm.me, or on Twitter at brianmitchl, where I will be maybe talking about this watch at some point, or you can hear about the other things I got going on. This episode is released under a Creative Commons license, so feel free to use this, remix it, whatever, just uh, link back to the source of the original episode. Um, if you want to discuss this episode, uh, you can tweet at us on Twitter at the Nexus TV or my personal Twitter, or you can uh, talk on our subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And if you like what we're doing over here at the Nexus, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. And with that, I'll leave it there. Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.